So I'm breaking out the Tronc CX-1 to lend to a friend that wants to get into 3D printing and his wife isn't exactly understanding. So I'm going to let him play with this, want to do some work to it, make sure he has the best chance he can get to start out. Stick around, let's see what I have to do to get her ready and I'm Ron and this is my place. So what I've got going on here is I've got a Tronc CX-1 and it's not stock by any means. I actually already transferred it into a, um, a ramps board and it's not, I had it in this box, but the problem that I was running into was it was suddenly three pieces, four if you count the power supply. So you had this box and then you had a loose controller and then a power supply along with the printer and it was just getting to be kind of a, a pain and I was always been meaning to put everything back together and I had printed this a while ago and had some issues uh, with the way it got put together and I just figured out a way that I'm gonna kind of try and utilize this and the idea is that all of this can go here the printer sits on top and then I'm thinking I may put the display and mount it to the top of the handle that you can then reach in from the back. So theoretically, at that point, it, other than supporting it, you should be able to just move it around in one, one piece uh, instead of having all this junk. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to be probably recording a bunch of footage and then I'll try and fast forward some and who knows. So we'll see what it's like. I was going to actually do a live stream, but I just didn't want to. <laughs> so I'm just going to change some views around and we'll see how it goes. So yeah, it's it's more or less, I've got a new camera view that's going to go, it's pretty much from the ceiling down. So hopefully this is a good view. You all are going to have to let me know um, what we're going to do here. So. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is deal with this in a few different little steps. So I think I'm going to set this to the side. I've also got a spare fan that I think I'm going to also use to mount. Here, I think. I think I'll do it on the inside. I don't know which way I'm going to blow it though. I may blow the air in and it'll exhaust everywhere else. So, anyway, that's kind of my plan. But my thought is that this is going to go inside there. And then this is going to be able to sit on top. So if this is all hidden, this is going to be how it's going to print. So he'll be able to hopefully manipulate the printer a little easier. So part of what I'm struggling with here is I need to make sure everything stays flexible. And I had originally made it trying to look a little bit nicer, but this plastic covering is just too stiff for what I wanted to do. So I'm going to start by taking this all off and get everything a little bit more flexible and see what that leaves me. I can always put some back. Apologize if you can hear the CR-10. I'm printing the Maker's Muse at 400% right now. It's kind of cool. Every so often it'll start catching. It scares me. It's better when you're not here to listen to it. It's big, so the tolerances are really kind of large. It's not like it's a hard print. It's just long. It's going to be probably... It's pushing 48 hours of printing so far. And it's about half done so it's 
It's going to be probably a four day print. Maybe more. I don't know. It's a bit crazy. Okay, so just to catch you up, um, what I ended up doing was I wanted to make this work, this, this chassis work. So that's the CR10. Um, I ended up dremeling out this uh, spot right here where the wires are going to go in. And then this one will go up to the Z gantry as well. Um, and that gives plenty of room. Probably didn't need to cut it out quite that much, but uh, that's fine. And then I took the uh, Arduino Mega uh, 2560 and ended up making a little board for it. And took that holder and, and used that because as you can see on the bottom here, it was made for other things. But what I've done is just super glued the adapter plate that I made and then the Arduino Mega, Arduino Mega is attached to that and then the ramps board is pressed into that. So it should be all strong and now I'm just going to be uh, wiring in the um, power here and I'll get this all hooked up and I will at that point, oh, didn't think it was going to fit. <laughs> um, so after I get the power done, and then the next thing I'm going to have to do is uh, I've got the fan here that I'm going to mount, and I'll probably just run it with wires in there, I think. That should be fine. I don't need to get fancier, so I'm not going to use my jumpers anymore. And then once that's all done, I, at that point, will need to, I'll probably power it on to see how everything works, and then... Uh, well, first I got to figure out what I'm going to do with, with this. So interesting side note, these are uh, it's an Arduino Mega with a ramps on top and unfortunately when I was installing this, these things are very, very, very sensitive and if you accidentally short the 5 volts when you're dealing with limit switches, even for the split second you will pop the 5 volt regulator, which is what I did and I just haven't gone about buying another one. So what I'm doing is if you run it, if you run the USB port on it to a charger, you'll actually back feed and you can basically give it an external five volts and then everything works fine. I found that out because I was using it, powering it off my Raspberry Pi, um, but this works as well. It'll go right to a five volt adapter until eventually I get it replaced.
One of the problems with the uh, Tronxy is the um, they only have a single screw to hold the Z, which is a bit annoying. Because if you push, if it gets pushed down too far, it'll actually slide the Z out to the side, and then of course, then you have knit issues. That looks better. Okay, so another day, another shirt. Um, this project has gone kind of weird and it'll be really funny to see once I put it all together into a video what it ends up being because I keep changing directions of what is going on um, but anyway so I was struggling with this uh, display that I had gotten back in the beginnings of all of this and as you can see it's it's multiple pieces but I couldn't I can't find any screws long enough to go all the way through all of it I mean, it's literally almost, I found stuff almost long enough, and I just was struggling with it. I didn't like the way it was going to end up working out. So after a while, I finally just got irritated, and uh, I also have decided the cables, I don't think, are going to work all that well for it to go up top like I was originally thinking, so I think it may have to be standalone. And my thought is you can just toss it up onto the bed here if you have to move it around. Uh, but anyways, so then I found this on Thingiverse rather than designing everything again and I just thought it printed out really cool so I wanted to show it I mean printed out major major overhang this was of course on the Mark III and I, I just thought it was a really neat setup I mean it shows that overhangs are functional and easy to do it's just I thought it printed out really well so anyways I just wanted to show that I thought it was kind of neat uh, where was I there so yeah we'll just see how uh, how this all works and I don't know So what I've got in here is the ability to, I've got to glue a few things together, but really it lets you lift up the printer as one piece. So now the, the box, the control is the only problem, and that theoretically you can just set here when you go store it away or, or put it off to the to the side and that way you can still carry it around not going to be perfect but it's it's a step in the right direction um, where it'll end up eventually i don't know uh, i don't use the printer very much which is why i decided to lend it to them um, another piece of the puzzle is i want to go th go through and look at everything to make sure it all looks good and that things are printing uh, i did notice one issue already that uh, 
it was doing a thermal runaway when I tried to print at 235. And I've seen that before. Um, so I may end up trying to do a pig cow or uh, most, it's a PLA machine anyways, 235 is Maker Geeks and I'll just recommend that you use this regular PLA. So I'm gonna switch to some white regular PLA that I've got and see if how stable that is. Um, but let's go ahead and power this bad boy back on. Can't see. I've got a fan for the case here. You know, I got a big whopping hole here. I don't know. Maybe I'll print a little cover for that. That would be kind of good. But as you can kind of see inside here is where the um, this is where the ramp board is in the Arduino Mega. Uh, plenty of room in there. Yeah, I don't know. It seems to be working. But let's see if we can get this thing going. See if it's alive. I've done quite a few upgrades on this thing. Okay, so the the print finished. There's a little bit of goobering up on the outer edges, a little bit of warpage. It's not terrible. It's not perfect by any means. But I think it's close enough to... Uh, there's some little bit of minor layer shifting and... And why, maybe? X looks a little better. Anyway, I think it's close enough that he'll be able to uh, he'll be able to learn 3D printing. There's a little bit of funkiness on the edge here, uh, but overall, I don't know how good it's alive. It works. I think we're going to call this good, and that's it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and hope, uh, since I'm doing this on Easter, hopefully everybody has a great Easter.